hi uh, everyone good morning uh, sundar good morning or uh, good afternoon or, yeah uh, to everyone who's watching we are joined by professor sundar tarukai who is a philosopher he's based in bangalore he's uh, worked through his entire career on issues like science and natural philosophy and all of these things and uh, uh, you may have heard of him and if you are here i'm certain that most of you know him uh, and have you know at least uh, interacted with some of his work but we are going to talk about a couple of things uh, related to the course that we are about to do on the philosophy of science which is starting on march 16th the last date for registration is on march 12th so anybody who is interested can go to the link below and uh, register uh, so sundar i thought we could just uh, give a brief introduction of what the course is about for people who are new to this or people who are still exploring whether or not they want to attend uh, could you just tell us what the course that we are going to do is about yeah thank you vijay um, great to be here conversation with you uh, the course is actually about an introduction to philosophy of science and it arose as part of initiatives we've been part of the barefoot philosophers trying to bring certain aspects of philosophy to the public and there has been we did one last uh, you know a couple of years back or a year back on introduction to philosophy and we had such a wonderful response to it and there have been a lot of interest in wanting a course on philosophy of science. It's a course I've been teaching, of course, for many years at different forums for PhD students, for science students, and so on. And most recently for science students at the Indian Institute of Science as part of their undergraduate course. And so I do realize that, you know, there's a lot of information about philosophy of science which is not available or accessible to the public. Or when those who are interested in that and want to read about it, they feel that they are not able to you know, find ways in which they can enter into that kind of uh, discipline. And uh, since there has been so much of interest around it, um, we thought we may as well have a course on this particular topic. And it's a topic which is, um, you know, it seems to bring together two different disciplines like philosophy and science, seemingly two different disciplines. But the fact that these are two different disciplines is a very new phenomena compared to the history of human thought. And as we all know that philosophy is the founding discipline of many other disciplines, including science. And as late as uh, Newton who was himself called a natural philosopher, there was a far more closer link between philosophy and science. And for various historical reasons, there is a split. And in the professionalization of degrees and professionalization of um, disciplines, uh, there's a lot of split. I mean, even within science, if you see today, there are hundreds of sub-disciplines which are all so specialized that just because you are in one sub-discipline in physics doesn't mean you'll be able to completely understand and work in some other discipline in physics and similarly with all the other disciplines. So um, it is part of the evolution of discipline, disciplinary knowledge and professionalization of it and institutionalization. So the philosophy of science course I'm talking about is going to be a very general introduction to asking the question, what is this thing called science really? That's really about it, right? Because the words, yeah. No, so uh, this, I think, uh, gets into another question that I think a lot of people have, and I certainly had when I first learned about philosophy of science and friends and values and all of these things. But uh, why is it that, and you just mentioned, uh, for instance, that you were taking undergraduate courses for Indian Institute of Science, and I know personally that you've taken a lot of courses for scientists themselves about science. And I think to a lay person listening, or a person who is perhaps the, like uh, to the uninitiated, uh, this might mm -hmm. seem like an odd thing that a, a philosopher is talking to scientists about science. So if you could just explain mm -hmm. a little bit what the value mm -hmm. is about, like for a philosopher to talk about science, why should a philosopher? Yeah, why should we? Yeah, that's a very legitimate question because, uh, you know, are they outsiders? Are they insiders? You know, these kind of questions arise. And also because, uh, you know, there has been a general suspicion of some of these disciplines within the field, particularly in places like India where the larger discipline called science studies, which includes history, philosophy, and sociology of science, which studies science from these different frameworks, historical frameworks, sociological, and philosophical, are sometimes seen with suspicion and they, they seem to be somewhat more critical of science and so on. So there are all these kinds of responses from different communities and groups which have an investment in the idea of science. But why philosophy of science? So first of all, we should remember that the task of philosophy is a foundational understanding of any action. 
So when we talk about religion, you could have philosophy of religion. So religion can be a set of practices, it can be a set of texts and so on. But what philosophy of religion tries to do is to understand religion itself as a particular um, whatever, concept, an act, a kind of an institution or whatever, and tries to understand what is it that defines this idea of religion, uh, what are the assumptions and foundations of it. So you have philosophy of language, which is so rich. It talks about the fact that, uh, you know, the very idea of thinking about language, what is language, what is it made up of, how is language, how does it have the capacity to produce meaning and to produce new words, etc. right? So I'm using this example of language because, you know, most people um, are very good in language. They speak some language or the other. They write and read very well. But if you ask them, what is it that they are doing? You know, that kind of a self-reflective awareness may not be present in them. I don't have to know linguistics to be able to speak in Kannada or Tamil. Or so um, in that sense, what I'm trying to say is philosophy of science is also doing the same thing. Scientists do science. And it does not mean that they don't understand science. Of course, they understand a lot of the structures of science because they are, they are the ones who are doing it. But a philosopher of science raises broader questions about the nature of science. What are the fundamental assumptions which are there? So for any activity to happen, including science, you have to start a certain given. You can't keep questioning and trying to understand them. Very simple example, you know, right from school physics, we will be told in school science, you will have, you know, from the right early lessons, let time velocity is distance divided by time. So right from school, it's a V equal to S divided by T. S is displacement of distance divided by time travel, right? And you feel, oh, now that's a very important idea, important science. But you can't stop and ask, hey, hold on. What is this thing called time really? What is this thing? You're saying, okay, let T be time, but that's like a clock time, some measured time. But what is this concept of time? And if you ask that question, you're asking a philosophical question. And there is a long history, both within, you know, uh, science to a little extent, but largely in philosophy, about trying to understand the nature of time. Now, the question is, can I continue to do physics or science without asking this question, what is time really? Of course you can. Just like, can we read and write without knowing linguistics and philosophy of language? Of course you can, right? But can you be a bank uh, teller, you know, transacting in money? without knowing the basics of what money is or without knowing the basis of economics, of course you can, right? So I, that doesn't mean that all scientists should know it, that all of us should know the foundations. But I'm saying, if you want to really understand the nature of something which you do, and then you want to self-critically reflect on it, and here I mean critically is not criticism, critically is to deeply engage with it, understand its assumptions, understand its foundations, understand the conditions under which it produces knowledge and so on, then uh, you have to move to philosophy because philosophy is the discipline which produces the language, produces the vocabulary, produces ways of thinking, which allows us to do this task. Mm. Now, you might also ask, why at all ask for these foundational questions about science? That science, you know, people are doing various things. It's, I think it's far more important to talk about philosophy of science than anything else because science is not just something which a few people do in their labs. It's had a great impact on society. It has a great impact on the future. It has a great impact on the nature of being human and the nature of human relationships, what we are, how we understand the world in its most primitive form. And today, science has become such a dominant force. Can we afford to just let it con this kind of a dynamism to continue without trying to understand a little bit about what makes it so successful, what makes it happen. I would say that as the basic aim of a lot of good philosophy of science, which tries to understand the nature of science. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for that, Sundar. So I, I think that uh, you delved into a couple of themes that we are going to be exploring in more detail throughout the course. And for anybody who's interested, I've uh, given a list of descriptions of what themes that we are going to explore in the course uh, in the video description below. Uh, so uh, if you are interested in these themes or any of the other themes listed there, please do join up for the course. And if you are watching it uh, after March 16th, uh, we keep doing something like things like this. So if you're interested, you can just subscribe to the channel and uh, you will get 
you know, uh, you, you get updates on what we are up to. Uh, but just to uh, end on a note that a lot of people have, uh, you know, <laughs> very grave concerns about even when we do our, uh, did our, have done our previous courses, uh, a lot of students have this question of, I think uh, a lot of them come into this wanting to read more and explore more and write more and all of these things. But, uh, you know, the, the people's schedules being what they are and, you know, just their, that inertia of getting to uh, uh, do a reading. Sometimes it's in language that it's not, it's not particularly accessible to you. Uh, so uh, I wanted to ask, what is your expectation of people who are participating in the course that they're about to do and any of our yeah. other courses in terms of uh, would you like them to have completed the reading? How important is it that they do? Uh, and even if they don't, how important, like how much would you like for them to actually explore these texts that we recommend, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know this is um, a very important question because, you know, I know that it's become a, a kind of a habit to give readings and people want to read, which is very important. But um, as you know, as I've told this to you and to many others often, um, I, for me, it's not about the reading the, the specific things, articles or books which are important. But to me, what is more important is the nature of reading, how to read those texts. And as you know, when I started this master's course in philosophy, the first course which we did in master's was reading, writing, actually kind of getting back to self-reflectively understand the nature of reading so that we recognize what we do when we read. So I'm not, I, I would say to these uh, people who want to join, not to get too worried about whether they understand whether those they can access those texts and so on because i want maybe we should do another course on just reading and writing which is one of my favorite things to do in many of my workshops but you know so i'm not too worried about that what i really would want them of course is that they have an open mind you know a completely open mind and of course when i'm saying this i'm self-reflectively thinking hold on you know philosophers keep saying there's no mind some philosophers say nothing called mind and so on but let's assume you know without that's another course so we'll talk about that but i'll say let's assume there's this idea of you know, a mind and say have an open mind more importantly uh, what i'm what i want to do with them not speaking to them but really uh, thinking with them is to Focus on this idea of thinking through concepts, thinking clearly, thinking carefully. It's not about what we say at the end. Or, you know, I might say, oh, yeah, science is great. Science can have these limitations. Science has its strengths and so on. I mean, those are all quite irrelevant to me. Point is, can we think carefully and in a way in which we try and understand the complexity of this process called science? So that really, for me, the only thing which I want them to come to is this open mind and capacity to think together as a group and, you know, explore those particular questions. We can always get back if they have questions about reading, you know, those things can always be discussed in the sessions. Thank you, Sudhar. And uh, just to uh, add to that point that you were mentioning about thinking together, I think that's also such an important aspect of what we do because at the end, I think Barefoot Philosophers, this has always been about like building that community and yeah. creating that sort of platform where those sorts of discussions and uh, you know, just conversations can happen where, you know, yeah. it's not, it's about understanding the world that we inhabit together uh, because right, without exactly. that shared understanding, we don't really get to anywhere that we want to go. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is great, Sundar, and uh, people who register are going to get more of this. Uh, and, you know, please comment uh, if, you know, there is something that you would like to ask we'll try to get back to you uh, i've also given emails and other contact information for anybody who's interested in getting in touch with us uh, thanks a lot sundar and i think um, like greatly looking forward to the course and you know i'm sure a lot of other people are as well yeah, thank, thank you, you Vijay. i'm also looking forward to it.